On today's show, we're tracking our state bird, the loon. Ever wonder how far they fly or dive and what they do when they do it? We'll find out. And if you've ever wanted to fish Mille Lacs but didn't know how, we have the place you ought to start. Fish on in the front. It's our automated pattern cutting machine. Ever wonder what goes into the making of a fishing rod? We'll go behind the scenes at St. Croix Fishing and learn the tricks of the trade. And later, our Minnesota Bound Classic is a story about a roadside beauty that we all love to see, the life and times of the sumac tree. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to this show. Our first story is about loons. Now everybody knows the loon is our Minnesota state bird, but beyond that, what do we know about that gorgeous bird? Well, some folks are trying to find out. Travis Frank has the story. The sound of a loon call signals life in the North Country. We admire this iconic bird, but until recently, not much has been known about them. Minnesota loon expert Larry Backland is part of a team dedicated to uncovering the mysteries of loon behavior. So little has been known about them through the years, but especially the whole wintering ground area or time of year, that's almost been like a big black hole. In 2010, the Gulf oil spill threatened our loons. This prompted the U.S. Geological Survey to act. We began to realize over the summer of 2010 that this wasn't just a disaster for wildlife and people in the Gulf of Mexico, but it was a disaster for migratory wildlife that spent part of their life in the Gulf and the rest of their life in Minnesota. Every year, Minnesota's loons migrate to the Gulf. Researcher Kevin Keenow wants to know if the oil spill hurt them. Well, we can start with the geolocator tags. It'll attach to the leg, then we'll wrap these zip ties around to hold it in place. To attach the tag, he's got to catch the loon. There are two pairs of loons. I would expect to see that pair right in this area someplace tonight. Once dark, the team hits the water. We often use calls to try and keep the bird's attention up on the, on the surface of the water. Come on, talk to us. We have bright spotlights that we use to locate the birds. This is our loon up here straight ahead. Then we slowly move in on them. Loons are very dangerous. They got a very sharp mandible and they'll use it. We have uh, cuts on our hands to prove that. Yeah, it takes some practice and it's a coordination among three of us. Back on shore. Kevin and his team quickly get to work, setting up an outdoor science lab. 7.69. We'll take a, a number of measurements, Coleman, head length, tarsus, uh, body length. So that's an average size male. Coleman, 92.54. So I got a Coleman, now I'm going to get a head measurement, 193.41, 87.88 and 772. So geolocator tag 2739. We're going to attach this to the left leg. The small sensor records pressure and location. It's collecting data right now. But I have the tags programmed such that during the fall period and early winter, it'll record dive depth every 20 seconds. Researchers worry that the loons are diving all the way to the bottom of the gulf, the very spot that might still hold some oil, the nasty stuff that can kill the loons. We determine the number of dives they make per day, 
how deep they're diving, what area of the water column they're foraging at, that type of information. Blood samples are going to be used for contaminant analyses. We can take a sample and some of the birds we may run for oil residues. Okay, we got everything on this one, Luke. Completely unharmed, the birds slide back into darkness. One year from tonight, Kevin and his team hope to see these birds again. The reunion looks to bring answers to the mystery surrounding the birds that we so dearly love. Yeah, we can do a little grilling. Up next, have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a launch boat captain? Well, we have his story and the fish that go with it. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Connecticut. And by Rapala. Like industrial excavators, its brake rotors are hardened with a heat treating process that can double their life. And like the Hoover Dam, its engine makes power when it's needed and conserves fuel when it isn't, making it the most fuel efficient V8 in a pickup, even beating Ford's EcoBoost V6. So it's only fitting that we'd have the confidence to equip the all new GMC Sierra with Pro Grade Protection the best coverage available on a pickup, including two years of scheduled maintenance. That's professional grade. If you've never been fishing on Mille Lacs, but would like to, some folks are afraid of that big lake, no need to be afraid, but you could go on what they call launch fishing, kind of a social experiment. It's a lot of fun, and what do they catch? You'll find out. Our man about the woods, Bill Shirk, has the story. No boat, no problem on Mille Lacs. If you want to fish, just look for the statue. You'll recognize it. How are you? Good, good, good. At Liberty Beach Resort, life on a launch is the way to go. How are you doing, big guy? Right, right. For as long as anyone can remember, Black Resorts have offered launch trips. <laughs> big fun on big old boats. Oh, oh, them are too fancy rods for this boat. Hey, Chris, Chris <laughs> ordered them. That's Dickie, and that's Dickie's boat. You can get on a launch with a big party of people. You can have fun. I mean, you can gas grill, you can bring your kids, your family, your relatives, and you can have a good time on it. With a boatload of friends, <laughs> literally, we zip out onto one of Dickie's favorite fishing holes. We're going to three miles. Out in deep water, we're going to try it there first. The fish are holding there, that's, that's what makes it good. Black's guide Chris Kudak used to be a net boy years ago. Getting the jig heads ready for the girls. He still loves playing the part. Three of them on there, let's see who else we got. Them. Anyone need a leech? Did you get set? No. Once the bobbers hit the water, life on a launch becomes a game of wait and see. A little slow start. You're not going to get on the show saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> launch has been around for, oh, I mean, I'm getting up there in age, I guess. It's been around a long, long time. I'm trying to get him to talk to a fish, but he won't talk to one. That would make the... Even the captain fishes with a rod in a holder, of course. If somebody gets a fish and I run for the net or whatever. Dickie's good. He's been guiding for 35 years. It's a good job. A good job until this happens. Fish on! Hey, hey, Dickie! Come on! Nice right, Bob. Nice fish on in the front. Nice when he waves. Perfect. Is he too big? 18 and a half. Here. Oh. <laughs> you go, baby. Right back in the line. Ready. Oh, man. Awesome. It's a beauty. For guests, the best part of these trips might be hanging with friends. Although it can also be the worst, too. Right, Larry? <laughs> All right. I'm not very good, I guess. Yeah, I don't that's know. Larry. Yeah, that's the story of my life. Fish on right here. Fish off the starboard bow. Larry, this is how you do it, Larry. That's yeah. how it's done. 
I like this, kind of hanging out with the gang. Look at all these people, they're having a great time. The weather's good, a little chop. No fish biting at the moment, so I get to take a break. Come on, Mark, Garrett. Yeah. Working on it here. I'll net your fish. I think I got a 130 point. <laughs> 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 oh. We're walleye fishing, right? Even when things slow down, someone's always catching them. Oh, monster! Monster! Walleye. Big walleye. <laughs> About noon, life on a launch becomes lunch. Yeah, we do a little grilling. Top notch stuff. There's nothing high class about this but it'll, it'll do the job. Hot dogs are ready. <laughs> That's the biggest catch of the day. You gotta hold that, Sarah. <laughs> it's Allie's. That's huge. Easy, Mom! You got the fish! Holy cow, look at that thing. I punch in every fish, every walleye we catch. So it's been a pretty good day so far. And it's about to get better. We've got first timers fishing too. Feel them, bro. Man, it's a beauty. Oh, 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 man! Nice. That came off. Yeah. Woo! Oh, very nice. Oh, yeah. That's your fish. <laughs> so get out, celebrate life on a launch. Oh, there's an eater. <laughs> Larry, I think this is yours. You <laughs> <laughs> take skill to catch fish that small. That's right. Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody got a match, I'll smoke them. Just don't worry about getting home. After all, Dickie's always got someone to flag him in. There's fish everywhere. You know, and, and it's fun. Coming up, we find out exactly how much work goes into making a St. Croix fishing rod. Stay tuned. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard. Premier manufacturers of maintenance-free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. By the yard, maintenance-free furniture. Comfort, elegance, and recycling combined. Call today for your free catalog or go online to buytheyard.net. We all know fishing is big in the Midwest, like Minnesota and Wisconsin, but do you know the fishing business is also big, for example, there is a company called St. Croix Rods, and do they make some dandies? Bill Shirk has a story. To me, all that is fishing is magical. From the moment I leave home to the second the fishing boat roars to life. Every time I fish, it feels like the first time. Call me sentimental, but even fishing poles have me hooked. After all, they make this happen. Oh, there he is. That magical moment we perpetually dream of. Good golly. Is that big enough? That same sort of magic happens just up the road in Wisconsin's ruffed grouse capital. Park Falls, where out on the edge of town, 150 workers create a form of art. A business started more than 50 years ago by brothers Bob and Bill Johnson, guys who like to fish. The company first product was uh, landing nets. Fancy nets most folks just couldn't afford. So St. Croix turned to other projects, fiberglass boats, and yes, fishing poles came poles with ferrules. They saw an opportunity and uh, that, that quickly blossomed into um, St. Croix Rod Company. Pretty interesting to look back at the old photos, especially when you see how St. Croix now makes rods. Grant 
granted, the program's a bit more high-tech these days, but the goal, well, it remains the same. Real unique blend of hand craftsmanship, blended with uh, high-tech materials. And some pretty fancy-looking machines. It's our automated pattern cutting machine. So what's it doing? Cutting out the individual pie-shaped patterns for a specific rod. Rich Belanger agreed to show us the birth of a St. Croix rod start to finish. This is our top of the line SC5. That's expensive carbon fiber on giant spools. Eventually, machines cut it all up and the fiber's ready to roll up on these things called mandrels. Workers roll the carbon fiber onto the mandrel, then cook them up for a few hours and all of a sudden, we're getting somewhere. Hot to the touch. You see where little drops of resin have come through the tape, which is normal. You know what's amazing? It's not like four, five, six, eight steps. It's like dozens and dozens of little things. There's your blank. Ready to roll. Almost. We need to sand it, paint it, trim it, and then we can assemble. It's just step after step after step after step. Oh, look. Painting process. That's it? Any color you want. Simple homemade squeegee puts on the paint perfectly. After the part is dipped, It'll run through a continuous feed oven. It takes about 25 minutes. When it comes out, it's cured, ready to go. So oh, it's dry. It's dry. Then on goes a swirl of fancy glue, the handle, a reel seat, and the foregrip. Oh, and then there's the guides, another form of art. Joyce there, she's been winding on guides for 27 years. So we call that just the seal coat. Sealing 101. Now, once the rods get packed up, they go to a magical place, St. Croix's Stockroom. Every day, the shipping carts fill up and hundreds of rods go out the door and into the hands of dreamers. All right, guys. Great. Thanks. Good luck. Yep. Folks who understand that emotion, that connection to a fishing rod, a magical <laughs> moment expressed each time a fish hits. It's part of your personality. Yeah. It defines you. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week takes a look at one of my favorite stories. It's all about the beautiful sumac. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Hennepin County Medical Center. Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition. Minnesota Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. You know, for me, there's no better way to spend the summer than be on a Minnesota lake or river. But now, thanks to Hennepin County Medical Center, you've got a way to make sure your day outdoors is time well spent. HCMC shares our passion for the outdoors, which is why they put together a website filled with safety tips and videos to help you plan and be prepared. And it's right at your fingertips at home or on the go. Simply visit hcmc.org outdoors and get the most out of your summer. It won't be long, you'll be driving along the road and on the side you'll see some beautiful bushes all flaming red-like. Well, that could be the sumac. But the sumac is just not pretty to look at. It's also pretty interesting. In the autumn of our lives, we relish the music of wild geese. We soak in the splendor of tamarack trees we praise the grace of migrating swans. But what about the lowly sumac? There's no poetic tributes, no ode to the most vivid autumn scarlet to feast our eyes. Oh, lovely sumac, it's time we got to know you. Two kinds of sumac, stag, horn, and smooth, always seem to grow in just the right spaces, turning our roadsides into pretty places. 
there's a third kind of sumac, one to beware. Deep in wet, woodsy swamps, a poisonous sumac grows. But keep your boots dry, you'll get by. Just remember, friendly sumac has red berries, full of vitamin C. Historians say sumac leaves and bark once helped us tan leather, dye our clothes, and cure ailments ranging from diarrhea to gonorrhea. Maybe that's more about sumac than we needed to know. Maybe it's enough to know, amid all the greenery of summer, it's the sumac that heralds a changing season. Its tropical leaves transform like magic into blades of fire. So ends the sumac cycle. Winter nears, its beauty fades, and only sumac seeds remain. Seeds to feed the birds, seeds to start anew, another patch of eye candy for autumn. Sumac, that's my ode to you. Ah, oh, the lovely sumac. Huh? Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, always the star of the show, who's very affectionate today. Right, Raven? You're going to give me a hug? Well, that's Raven. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.